A brand new season of Major League Baseball is right around the corner, so it's time to rank the best player at every height. Of course, we're going to start off with the short kings, and then we're going to move on to guys who never have to worry about getting a swipe left on hinge because they're so tall. Now, I'm a short king myself, so every single new subscriber that we get today, I get to grow one centimeter. Now, our first player did not play in 2023, but Esteban Key Rose, I think that's how you say his last name, he is the only player in baseball that was five foot four over the last two seasons. The 32-year-old is still a rookie going into 2023. 2023 and in 40 at bats for the 2022 Cubs he had a 370 on base percentage and defensively he was pretty good he had two defensive runs saved surprisingly enough there hasn't been a single baseball player over the last two seasons who's been five foot five the more you know. We have an honorable mention for the best player at five foot six. We have Clayton Andrews, who is now a pitcher for the Yankees. He had a 27 ERA last year, so we're not going to talk about it. Obviously, when you think of short baseball players, your mind automatically goes to this guy right here, Jose Altuve. And despite the fact that he's had a lot of shortcomings, Yes, full pun intended. This man is going to cartwheel into the Hall of Fame. For his career, he's hitting 307 with a 129 OPS plus. He is approaching 50 war, and he still has plenty of time left. And what's crazy is it seems like he's getting better with age. Since the beginning of 2022, he has a 304 batting average and a 157 OPS plus. Jose Altuve is easily the best player at 5'6". Coming up next, the best baseball player at 5'7". He actually has a clothing line dedicated to shorter men like myself, so that's cool. If 2023 was the 2020 shortened season and there was an all-star game in 2020, Marcus Stroman would have been the starter. I know he's with the Yankees now, but for the Cubs last year, over his first 16 starts, Marcus put up a 2.28 ERA and he held his opponents to a 191 batting average. And I know that he's blocked almost every single person watching this on Twitter, but if I'm talking about the most entertaining pitcher in baseball, Marcus Stroman, he's in that conversation. He has a lot of fun playing baseball. So we have some honorable mentions for the best 5'8 player in baseball. We have Matt McClain of the Reds who absolutely rakes and Masataka Yoshida of the Boston Red Sox. But to me, I got to go with Ozzy Albies. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this, but a crazy stat about Ozzy Albies, he's the only second baseman ever with 180 doubles and 130 home runs by their age 26 season. Last year for the Braves, Ozzy Albies hit 33 home runs with the 124 OPS plus at 5 foot 8. That makes me proud as a fellow 5'8 short king. Moving on over to 5'9, some other honorable mentions. We have Ha Seung Kim of the San Diego Padres, their brand new shortstop. We have J Ram, Jose Ramirez of the Cleveland Guardians. But for me, it's easy. It's got to be Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is coming off an insane 2023 season in which he had an 8.3 war on baseball reference. That was the third highest of his career. He's had a 9.5 war and a 10.7 war. That was back in 2018. One of the best five tool seasons we've ever seen from a baseball player. So the only question about Mookie Betts, what hat is he going to be wearing when he's inducted into the Hall of Fame? So because there are more taller baseball players than shorter, the next few heights are about to get pretty crowded. The best player at 5'10 going into 2024, you have Will Smith of the Dodgers, Francisco Alvarez, Brandon Lau, and Corbin Carroll. Yeah, we got to go Corbin. As a rookie for the Diamondbacks, Corbin Carroll hit 285 with 25 home runs, a 134 OPS plus. And because we're talking about Corbin Carroll, we got to talk about the speed. He had 54 stolen bases. He's going into his age 23 season, so he has time on his side. If Corbin Carroll can even repeat 80% of what he did in 2023 for the next 10 to 12 years, Corbin could be in rare territory by the time his career is all said and done. He could sneak into a 400 home run, 400 stolen base club. It's going to be hard, but honestly... He might be able to do it. Defensively, he is a wizard out there. He's not going to have 18 or 19 outfield assists like Nolan Jones, but defensively, he can go and get it with some of the best of them. Okay, okay, five foot eleven. Yeah, we're getting pretty crowded. We have William Contreras versus Seiya Suzuki versus Josh Naylor versus Isaac Paredes. Who is it going to be? Well, in my opinion, it's not going to be any of those guys. It's got to be Francisco Lindor of the Mets. Francisco Lindor joined some elite company last year as one of the few shortstops in baseball history to have a 30-30 season. That's 30-plus home runs and 30-plus stolen bases. He had 31 home runs and 31 stolen bases, and defensively, I mean, we know what Francisco Lindor does. There's two different defensive stats that we use when we're talking about defense. We have outs above average and DRS, defensive run saves. He had seven DRS and six outs above average. So again, no matter how you slice it, he's elite defensively. He just turned 30 years old and he's already had a career 42.7 war. We are looking at a future Hall of Famer. Who is the best player at 5'12"? 
Obviously, I'm joking. The first player in the six foot list, the best six foot baseball player, we have Christian Walker versus Marcus Simeon, Rafael Devers, and you guys know whoever I talk about last is gonna be the guy. I gotta go Ronald, the 2023 NL MVP. Ronald Acuna Jr. just had a road to the show type season. He had 41 home runs, 73 stolen bases with a 416 on base percentage, all while hitting 337. How did he do that? Ronald is one of the best base dealers in baseball. He can hit 340. He has a cannon for an arm. The only thing that Ronald needs to work on going into 2024 and 2025 and beyond are baseballs hit in front of him. If he can somehow manage reads off the bat, he could be a perennial 11 win player. That's how special he is. Ronald is very good at going back on the baseball, but again, his only struggle is going in. If he can somehow figure that out, my God. Now, honestly, I would say this video has been pretty easy to make so far, but six foot one, this is where it gets a little bit more difficult because we have Dansby Swanson, a defensive god, Ketel Marte, a really nice switch hitter, Adolis Garcia, who broke out in a big way last season, and Bobby Witt Jr. I mean, for me, it's between Adolis and Bobby, but I gotta go Bobby. Bobby Witt Jr. went from being the worst defensive shortstop in baseball to maybe the best. He had 14, I'm gonna repeat that. 14 outs above average, so he wasn't the cream of the crop, but still, that's really, really good. He's coming off an age 23 season in which he belted 30 home runs with a whopping 49 stolen bases, and he ended the season with a 120 OPS plus, so that means he was 20% better than average. By the time that it's all said and done, I could very well see Bobby Wood Jr. coming away with multiple MVPs now that Shohei Otani is in the NL. Speaking of someone who could win multiple MVPs in the AL if he stays there, Juan Soto, is he the best player at 6'2"? I don't think so. I'm going Mike Trout still. I know, I know the best ability is availability, but Mike Trout, he's still him. It kind of blows my mind that people think that Mike Trout isn't the same guy, despite the fact that in 2022, he had 40 home runs in 119 games. In 2023, he was on pace to play 140 plus games before he took a weird swing and broke his handmate bone. Now, yes, Mike Trout only played 36 games in 2021, so if you want to say that Juan Soto is more dependable going into 2024, I can't argue with that, but better? I'm still going Michael. Last year, he was top 4% in sprint speed. He was top 15% in outs above average. That is a defense stat. He still has a pretty good arm as well. Just for me, I think he's better at more things than Juan Soto. All right, buckle in for six foot three, Bryce Harper versus J-Rod versus Austin Riley versus Gunnar Henderson versus Goldie versus Corbin Burns versus Max Scherzer. Who are we going to pick? That's a lot of good baseball players. I think we still got to go Bryce Harper. We all know that Bryce Harper is an on-base god. He had a 401 on-base percentage last year and a 146 OPS plus. But the thing that you guys might not know about is the fact that he plays pretty good defense over that first base. And I know that first base defense isn't that highly coveted. You'd almost rather have a Pete Alonso or a Freddie Freeman, someone who tears covers off of baseballs. You don't really worry about defense. But with Bryce, you get a full package. For me, guys like J-Rod and Austin Riley, they are on the cusp of passing a guy like Bryce Harper. But for me, I gotta go with the two-timer. Okay, now it's about to get crazy. We have the best six foot four baseball player. We have Otani versus Seeger versus Tucker versus Garrett Cole versus Blake Snell versus Jacob deGrom, who still exists, and also Zach Wheeler, who is very underrated. Some of you guys are gonna bring up a very valid argument that going into 2024, you might take Seeger over Otani because Otani's not gonna be a pitcher. But for me, I am not going to disrespect the GOAT. Shohei Otani had a 412 on base percentage, a 184 OPS plus, and 44 home runs, despite the fact that he missed like 27 games. He's one of the few players in baseball history that have had multiple seasons of 40 home runs and 20 stolen bases in a single season. He's done that two of the last three years. And also, by the way, yeah, he's a pitcher. Since 2021, Shohei Otani has a combined 2.8 ERA and an insane 11.4 strikeouts per nine. So while I think that Corey Seager without the shift is one of the best hitters I've ever seen, I still have to give the crown to the best baseball player I've ever seen. Shohei Otani. Ooh, we have some sluggers coming up at six foot five. We have Matt Olson versus Freddie Freeman versus Jordan Alvarez. And I do want to put some respect on JB's name, Justin Verlander. He's six foot five, but he's not better than the other guys that we talked about. Matt Olson broke out for a huge 2023. Jordan Alvarez is one of the best hitters in baseball, but collectively, I think Freddie Freeman is the right pick. What do you guys think? Freddie Freeman has a 321 batting average, a 410 on base percentage, and a 155 OPS plus since 20. 
20. That would be insane for one season, let alone 540 games. Last year, Freddie Freeman almost made history. He was so close to becoming one of the few players. I think there's three or four guys in the history of baseball that have had 60 doubles in one season. He had 59 doubles last year on top of 29 home runs. He stole 23 bags. He had a 161 OPS plus. So while I'm more terrified of Jordan Alvarez as a complete baseball player, to me, I'm still going Freddie Freeman and also shout out to Matt Olson. He's really, really good as well, but I'm going Freddie. We have some mountains of men coming up. Six foot six, Giancarlo Stanton versus the youngster, Jordan Walker. I forgot that he's that tall. Chris Sale and Jordan Montgomery. Who are we going with? I think we still have to go Chris Sale. I know that guys like Mike Trout and Chris Sale have been injury prone over the last few seasons, but the way that I'm structuring this video, it's pretty simple. Who's the best? Who's him of the group? I know that Chris Sale got lit up last year for a 4.3 ERA, so it might make more sense to go with a guy like Jordan Montgomery or a young guy who got better as the season progressed and Jordan Walker. But for me, guys like Mike Trout, Chris Sale, I do have to believe in their ceilings because we've seen them do it before. The only question mark we have about guys like Trout and Sale, can they stay healthy? And to me, even though Chris Sale got lit up last year, he still was incredibly nasty. 125 strikeouts and 102 innings. I just personally believe that he's going to stay healthier and he could be a dark horse Cy Young pick for the Braves. So you guys saw O'Neill Cruz in the thumbnail and I tried to bait you guys. No, he's not the best six foot seven player in baseball. It's Aaron Judge, the captain. Aaron Judge missed 56 games in 2023 and still somehow managed 37 home runs and 75 RBIs on a Yankees team that didn't have a lot of support around him. How did he do that? Well, I know how. He's Aaron Judge. His 162 game pace for his career is insane. He's averaging 50 home runs and a 164 OPS plus per 162 games. If you came to me with the argument that because Otani isn't pitching in 2024, someone else has to be the best player in baseball, if you brought up Aaron Judge, I'm not gonna fight you. Is he the best player in baseball now that Otani's injured? Now, earlier I brought up the fact that we're gonna be talking about a few mountain of men, but now we have the mountain, Felix Bautista. Is he better than six foot eight Tyler Glasnow? I forgot that Glasnow was that tall. I thought he was like six foot seven. There's also Yuri Perez and Chris Martin. No, not that Chris Martin of Coldplay. That one, there you go. For me, I prioritize a starting pitcher a little bit more than a closing pitcher. So despite the fact that I think that Felix Bautista the Mountain is all time nasty, I'm going with Tyler Glasnow. Since 2019, Tyler Glasnow has a three ERA, a 2.89 FIP. That is a really strong pitching stat to see how good is a pitcher at limiting walks, limiting home runs, and striking guys out. The dude has 462 strikeouts over his last 332 innings. That is a 12.5 strikeouts per nine. He's kind of the Felix Bautista of starting pitchers. The only human in baseball last year who was six foot nine, the twin starting pitcher, Bailey Ober. This guy's actually pretty good. He's going to have a good chance at making the starting rotation over a younger guy like Louis Varlin. So Bailey Ober, look at you making the video. We have not had a player in baseball who was six foot 10 since 2021. The last guy that we saw was Angels relief pitcher Aaron Sluggers. I don't even know if he's on the Angels anymore. He might be on the Rays or something. We won't talk about his stats. I don't want to disrespect the man, but yeah, six foot 10 Aaron Sluggers. He wins by default. And last but not least, it makes so much sense that the tallest player in baseball history, a literal giant, is on the Giants. I believe the H in his first name is Silent. I think his name is Sean Jelly. If I'm wrong, please let me know. And just like Aaron Sleggers, we're not gonna talk about his recent stats, but Sean, he's a giant and he's on the Giants. He's six foot 11. And no, there's never been a seven footer in Major League Baseball. So um, here's Shaq trying to hit a softball. But that does it for today's video. If you enjoyed, do me a favor, leave a like. And if you're brand new, hit that subscribe button, stick around, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.